Hello, welcome to Blind Spot Reactions with Josh and Justine, your co-hosts of Screen Queens Horror Road Trip Podcast. And we're back for another Blind Spot Reaction. You just be getting it every time. I get it. Um, today we're just doing a short one. We've had a busy week, but we didn't want to leave you guys hanging again with another week off. So we are watching the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. Uh -huh. The Wes Anderson short film that's up for best uh, short, short film tonight mm -hmm. at the Oscars. We're filming this on Oscar Sunday. So by the time you see this, we'll know if it won or not. Oh yeah, you can put that in mm -hmm. uh, if it's like winner, winner, chicken yeah. dinner, or loser, so, loser, the, chicken loser. The wonderful story of Henry Sugar Tits. Sugary tits, yes. <laughs> Milk and sugar tits. <laughs> no, I, I really know nothing about this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's Wes Anderson, so it's going to be, you know, charming, whimsical, colorful. And it's like... Symmetrical. A ser There's a series of shorts that he did for I, Netflix. Yeah, he has done a bunch, but this, I guess, is the the best one. This is the penultimate? Penultimate. This is where we're getting our sugar tits song? Doesn't penultimate mean, like, no, next to that's last like the, or something? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Anyways, but this is supposed to be, like, the we best one of the bunch, uh -huh. and we're excited to see it. Wes Anderson's a fun filmmaker. He's fun to watch. Let's mm -hmm. do it. And he makes really wonderful sugar. Tits. Sugar tits. <laughs> That's going to get us banned on... <laughs> oh, no. On YouTube. <laughs> We're going to get banned. We're going to get banned. There's been some things that we have said, but I doubt it's Henry Sugar Tits that's going to get us banned. Well, what's funny is it's... They get you in the first, like... They get you in the first? Well, when you... Okay, if you guys want to be in on the no. When... Every time we upload a video, it asks you uh, how to rate your video. Like, is there language violence? Blah, blah, mm. blah. One of the things for language says, like, is there any profanity in the first, like, two minutes? Is tits considered profane? I don't know, but we've said it enough times. So let's... <laughs> we'll find out. Here we go. The wonderful story we... of Henry Sugar. <laughs> I guess we... Classic Wes Anderson vibe. Well, it's important. Uh, before I start, I like to make sure I have everything around me that I'm going to Head be. said by Raul Dahl. Yeah. It's based on the story of his. That's cool. And always make sure I have a sharp pencil before I start. <laughs> and then I like to clean my writing board. He's very particular. There. And then finally one starts. I'm loving the color palette. This very like orangey yellow. Oh, vintagey. Mm hmm. Henry Sugar was 41 years old, unmarried, and rich. He was rich because he had a rich father who was now dead. R.I.P. He drove a Ferrari motor car, which cost him about the same as a country cottage. All his friends were rich, and he had never done a day's work in his life. Men like Henry Sugar can be found drifting like seaweed all over the world. One of those men. <laughs> I want to be Henry Sugar. All rich people of Henry's type, of course, have one peculiarity in common. A terrific urge to make themselves richer. The 10 million is never enough, nor is 20 million. Cute little, little cottage house. One summer weekend, Henry drove down from London to the countryside to stay with Sir William W. <laughs> But when Henry arrived that Saturday, it was already pelting with rain. The host and his other guests wild away. <laughs> Henry glumly stared out at the drops splashing against the windows. Henry wandered out of the drawing room and into the front hall. He drifted through the house, aimless. Oh, the artifice of the set makes it like a play. He was about to leave when his eye was caught and held by something quite different. He pulled it from the shelf. 
It's actually nothing more than a cardboard exercise book of the kind that children use at school. On the first page, hand printed in black ink, clear and neat, it said, Strange, weird, what is this? He settled himself into an armchair and started from the beginning. The following is what Henry read in the Little Blue Exercise book. Oh, cool. Okay. My name is ZZ Chatterjee. Oh, Dev Patel. Three other doctors were present with me. Dr. Marshall, Dr. Mithra, and Dr. McFarlane. There was a knock on the door. Come in. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Ben Kingsley? Mm hmm You may bandage my head with 50 bandages in any way you wish, and I will still be able to read you a book. You seem perfectly serious. I felt my curiosity beginning to stir. Come in, please. All right. I love the, like, inner monologue that's just spoken out loud. Whenever our company arrives in a new town, I go straight to the largest hospital and ask the doctors to bandage my eyes in the most thorough and expert fashion. It is important this job is done by doctors, otherwise people may think I'm cheating. <laughs> Dead. Perfect. You nip down to the hospital bakery while I take him into the surgery and see the other guy been in? He looks familiar. Yeah, I'm not sure. I took a small bottle of collodion from the cupboard. I'm going to glue your eyelids shut with this. Oh my god. Just dab a bit of alcohol carefully below the lashes. That'll dissolve it. Keep your eyes closed while we wait for it to harden, please. I do love how the actors are the ones doing like essentially the voiceover, mm -hmm. narrating it. How's that? Splendid, I said. It looked like a man who had suffered some terrible brain operation. How does it feel? It feels very good. good. I must compliment you gentlemen on doing such a thorough job. <laughs> he looks hilarious. Imdai Khan was walking normally quite briskly along the hospital corridor. He saw it, I cried. He saw that trolley. This is absolutely unbelievable. Well, he sees it out of his eyes. His whole face was rigid with shocked disbelief. I love that the back has the little zip up. Mm -hmm. Several people were coming up. You can see how they reacted. At the bottom of the stairs, he turned and headed out the doors of the street. He can see without his eyes. Below us in the courtyard, waiting proud of a hundred barefoot children, shouted and surged towards our white-headed visitor. He greeted them by holding both hands above his... Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Then pedaled the figure eights around the courtyard. The barefoot children chased him, cheering and laughing in his wake. Then he turned a corner and was gone. I can't bring myself to believe it, Dr. Marshall said. I can't bring myself to believe it. <laughs> The boy placed a needle in one of Imdad Khan's hands and a length of cotton thread in the other. An enormous magnifying glass was positioned in front of him. And, with no false moves, he neatly threaded the thread through the <laughs> eye of the needle. I love a giant magnifying glass. You're curious, Doctor, am I correct? Most curious, I said. Once again, I was struck by the peculiarly thick matting of black hair growing on the outsides of his ears. Ooh. He needs to get that wax. That is... the better to hear you with, my dear. I believe I got everything Imdad Khan said to me that evening, word for word. I give it to you now, exactly as he spoke it. Everything? Word for word. What truly fantastic luck. Talking to my companion, I found that he was the disciple of the great yogi himself. I'm loving like the little puppet theater behind them. I blurted out, This is the man I'm looking for. Please may I meet him? My companion looked at me long and slow. Thank you. I heard a rustling in the undergrowth. If that's not him, then it's a tiger, and I'm about to be pounced upon. And eaten in little torn morsels of bloody flesh. It was him. <laughs> well, thank goodness. And then, as I watched, I saw, quite positively, his body slowly lifting off the ground. Hmm. 12 inches, 15, 18. <laughs> I love that the box is sitting on blends empirically with the background. Up in the tree, I said to myself, there before you is a man sitting in the air. These are really cool, like, special, not special effects, like practical effects, but also it's, like, staged. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he picked up a brick and threw it at me so hard it broke in two as it struck my right leg just below the knee. I have the scar. Oh, still, I'll show it to you. <laughs> Reminds me of a play also mixed with, like, how you would see sets, like, in an old silent movie. Mm. They forget that there are other ways of sending an image to the brain. Imdad Khan fell silent. He was tired. What other ways, I asked. The seeing is done by another part of the body. Which part? Hmm. What part is he using, if not his eyes, for seeing, Josh? 
And sugar tits? There you go. At a quarter to seven that evening, we drove to the Royal Palace Hall. I parked the car and the two of us walked to the theater. There's something wrong, I said. There was no crowd outside the hall and the doors were closed. The poster advertising the show was still in place, but I now saw that someone had printed across it in black paint. Night's performance canceled. I asked an old gatekeeper standing by the locked doors. What happened? Someone died. Who? Of course, I already knew. The man who sees without his eyes. <laughs> he went to sleep and never woke up. This is a true and accurate report of everything that took place concerning my two meetings with him, Dad Khan. Well, well, well. What's he gonna do with this story? This is a terrific piece of information. This could change my life. Is he gonna start seeing without his eyes? He's gonna start practicing. Mr. Sugar Tits, what are you about to do? The piece of information Henry was referring to was that Imdad Khan had trained himself to read the value of a playing card from the reverse side. For the first time in his life, he threw himself into something with genuine enthusiasm, and the progress he made was remarkable. After six months, he could concentrate absolutely upon the image of his own face for no less than three minutes without a single outside thought entering his mind. It's me, Henry thought. I'm the one in a billion gifted with the ability to acquire yoga powers at incredible speed. By the end of the first year, he'd exceeded five and a half minutes. The time had come. Do you think you could do it? Um, I feel like if I dedicated enough time, I could, yeah. Within a month, he's down to a minute and a half. Six months, 20 seconds. Seven more months, 10 seconds flat. His target is five. He knows that unless he can read through a card in a maximum of five seconds, he won't be able to work the casino successfully. Wow. He's letting himself go, that beard, the hair. He hasn't left his flat. He's in his underwear. Five seconds. And he goes straight through the pack, timing himself with every card. Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. How long has it taken him to reach this moment? Three years and three months of uninterrupted effort. Oh, uh, goodness. I think that beard would be even longer. The dealer took Henry's plaque and dropped it into a slot on the table. He was a young... Ish man with black eyes and gray skin. He never smiled and only spoke when necessary. He had exceptionally slim hands and there was arithmetic in his fingers. Exceptionally slim hands. Henry caught the look in the dealer's eyes and realized at once he'd made a silly mistake. He'd attracted attention. I beg your pardon. He must never do that again. They're gonna think he's cheating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Henry was now almost certainly capable of making money faster than any other person in the entire world. Yeah, but he was just cheating. I call it just using the gifts you have to take advantage of the situation. <laughs> Henry watches in terror. He knows a large blood clot which is broken free and is traveling in the vein will ultimately reach the heart. He is about to die. Now, that wouldn't be a bad ending for a work of fiction. This story isn't fiction. This story is fact. The only untrue thing about it is Henry's name, which wasn't Henry Sugar. His name has to be protected. Still must be protected. Apart from that, this is a true story. <laughs> Here's what actually happened. Tell us. We're gonna make it rain. <laughs> Good morning, sir. That's for you. It's a present. Put it in your pocket. <laughs> All right. I want to happen upon this. Just money rain. Uh oh, something's gonna happen. Oh yeah, fights, chaos. The doorbell rang. What the devil do you think you're doing? <laughs> If you're lucky enough to win yourself a tremendous big sum of money like that and you want to give it away, you don't throw it out of the window. You give it somewhere it'll do some good. A hospital, for instance, or an orphanage. He has a point. Then, very suddenly, all at once, Henry felt a powerful electricity tingling through his entire body. And there began to come to him the great and marvellous idea that was to change everything. 
Henry started pacing up and down, ticking off the points that would make his marvelous idea possible. Is he going to use it for good? Or... I'm going to win a very large sum of money each and every day of my life from this moment forward. Two, I must never go to the same casino. Or then give the money to the charity. Three, I must never win too much money in one sitting. Fifty thousand pounds a night. That's my limit. Fifty thousand pounds a night for three hundred and sixty-five days a year. That's eighteen point two five million pounds. That's a good like country accent. Mm -hmm. Six, I'll take the money I make and establish hospitals and orphanages all around the world. Good for that's you. Nice. That's a dream. That sounds corny and sentimental, uh -huh. but it's a reality, and I think I can actually make it that's work. That's so pretty. It be corny at all. It would be, I think, wonderfully stupendous. Seven, I need a partner. <laughs> he moved with astonishing speed, sometimes changing his identity several times in a single week. Often the only clue John Winston had as to Henry's whereabouts was the address of the bank which had sent the money. It was stupendous. It's almost like catch me if you can. Like, yeah. <laughs> Changing his identity, but it's like superpowers. Getting money, yeah. <laughs> oh, floating. the little box. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a mirror or something? No, it's no, painted. It's just painted. Henry died last year, age sixty-three, from a pulmonary embolism. He saw it coming, quite literally. Mm. He'd been following his plan for just over twenty years. He'd made six hundred and forty-four million pounds. Wow. He'd left 21 well-established, well-run children's hospitals and orphanages all around the world, administered and financed from Lausanne by John Winston and his staff. His work was complete. Now, how do I know all I this? I almost forgot about him. You keep calling him Henry Sugar, yet you tell me that wasn't his name. Don't you want me to say who he really was when I do the story? No, John Winston said. Max and I promised never to reveal his identity. Suppose it'll probably leak out sooner or later. After all, he was from a fairly well-known English family, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't try to find out. Just please, just call him plain Mr. Henry Sugar. And that is what I have done. <laughs> now take a bow. Wow. It was written by Roald Dahl and it was written in the Gypsy House. Oh, okay. Okay. So he was kind of playing like Roald Dahl. No, you know. saw the gypsy house. Well, that was cool. That was cute. Clap, clap, clap! I do think Wes Anderson is really suited for a Raw Doll story. I mean, he did Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was really great. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other shorts he did are all Raw Doll short stories. Now that this came on, and um, I put that back in my head. I was like, oh yeah, I think I've heard that before. Yeah, well, in in the description at the t before you click into it, I think it says that it's a part of a series. Oh, okay. Of, yeah. yeah. So. so very cool. We'll have to watch the other ones sometimes. Yes. But... Yeah, because there's a couple that are only like mm -hmm. 14 minutes long, but. Yeah, this is fun. Glad we got to watch it for the Oscars. Mm -hmm. um, we saw the other short film categories, like we saw all the documentary shorts, all the animated shorts, but we didn't make it to the screening to see all just the live action shorts, and so it worked out that we could watch it for you guys today and for ourselves right mm -hmm. before the oscars so we've yeah. got to now fill out our ballots and get our treats all ready and prepared and get to our oscar party yeah we love even though do the oscars really matter probably not they matter for the people that win them but yeah i love a just, good outfit yeah they're just fun to watch mm -hmm. excuse to have some drinks and eat and hang out with friends so Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. We will be back with a full-length movie next week. We're doing Society of the Snow. Yes. Um, we're really excited about that. We love The Impossible. And I know we probably already said last reaction that it's what it was going to be this week. But things just didn't work out for us to sit and watch a two-and-a-half-hour movie this week. But... Scheduling-wise, it was a little wet. So we'll be back on track next week. Yep. And thank you for the recommendations because you guys spoke and we listened. So Society mm -hmm. of the Snow it is coming. And... Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to send us a postcard or anything, there's our P.O. box. Mm -hmm. And follow us on the social medias, rate and review, do like all that mm -hmm. stuff because you like us, yeah. we like you, and we'll check you next time. Yeah. Bye! Bye.